What's up, Bonnet family? Mike Lindsley back with you for an ML Sports Take. It's all brought to you by our good friends at Camillus Golf Club, Welch & Company Jewelers, and these guys, Stumbling Monkey Brewing Company. Make sure you stop out for a pint if you're in and around the Rochester area, stumblingmonkeybeer.com. For more information, my man Rob, good friend, doing a great job out there, and definitely they love their Bonnies. Trust me, Rob and I text about it all the time. Big one tonight in the Riley Center. There is no hotter team than Loyola Chicago uh, right now, this, uh, by the way, is the sixth meeting all time between the two schools. Last year, they met in Chicago. A uh, bunch of games, you know, early, you know, or late 40s, 50s, that kind of time period. But um, really, it's, you know, only the, the second meeting of the modern, you know, sort of A-10 that we know. And Loyola Chicago was dreadful, uh, if you remember, uh, last year um, in the A-10. And what a turnaround they've had. I mean, they went 10-21 and 21 last year and 4 for 14 uh, in the A-10 a season ago, and, and they're hot. They're the hottest team in the A-10. Uh, they won seven straight games. They can blow you out. They can beat you close. Um, I think this game really is going to be an interesting chess match between a Bonaventure team that this year, when they win, they shoot lights out and they score a ton of points. When they lose, they have awful shooting games. They don't have a lot of motion, tons of turnovers, terrible balance, um, and they just don't score points. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, right? Because you could look at it and go, well, hey, you know, the team has the ability to score a ton of points. But from where I sit, I've always told you that I like it when they win in the upper 50s, low 60s, because that means that they're locking down defensively. They have some kind of a balance scoring, big buckets late, more clutch, make free throws late, and then and then they win. And it seems like they win more often if they win that way, right? I mean, look at the roller coaster year that, that we've seen this year. They either score a million points and they have a crazy lights out shooting. They make a million threes. The former Jan is on. Everybody's going crazy. Uh, even Banks is making shots, which is saying something and a bunch of stuff going on. Or it's way the other way and there's just, they're out of sorts offensively. Chad Venning doesn't know where he is. Again, turnovers galore, missing shots like crazy, get down by a bunch of points. You know, it's one or the other here. So, you know, pick your poison as a Bonnet fan. Um, but, I, look, I, I think they win more and they're more consistent when they win, you know, in that mid to low 60s area than they than, than trying to win 87 to 83 every game. But uh, that's just me. I mean, the ability to go out and score a ton of points is great, but to keep up that pace is extremely hard is all I'm saying. Now, a couple of guys to look at for Loyola. And by the way, please like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel at ML Sports Platter. Graduate guard Braden Norris. He leads the A-10 in assists per game with eight uh, per contest. Great passer, sets the tone. And then you've got uh, Philip Alston and Des Watson, a couple of guys to keep in mind in terms of the score sheet. Those guys get a lot of touches, uh, you know, in and around the rim. Uh, they can beat you in the mid-range and all the rest and, and, and just be on the lookout. Their guards, like Bonas guards, rebound well. Charles Pride, by the way, I got a note on him in terms of the rebounding, but this team averages 36 and a half rebounds per game, and their guards like to get after it. Defensively, their hands are always in the play. They Ventures got to take care of the basketball. They got to rebound the ball well, and they have to have a good start in this game, in my opinion, if they're going to win the basketball game. Loyola shoots it great from the floor. 46.4 from the field and 35.9 from three. So they do have the ability to score, even though their bread and butter really is the defensive side uh, of, of the basketball court. Now, when you look at some of the numbers, this team is really, really at the, at the top of the conference in a lot of areas, right? They lead the A-10 in assists. Um, it's also best in the country. Bench points per game in the A-10, field goal percentage, scoring margin, steals per game, three-point percentage, three-point percentage defense, and, and, and this team is just really a lockdown club, right? Uh, they lead the A-10 and rank 19th among all Division I teams in terms of holding opponents to 59 points per game. So again, that Bona locomotive offense trying to score, Loyola is going to do a lot to limit Bonaventure. And so Bonaventure has got to get, and this is Mark Schmidt and his coaching staff, getting the right rotation out there. If there was ever a game that we're looking at to, you know, catch that lightning in a bottle after a very disappointing season, it would be this game from a rotation standpoint, from a cohesion chemistry standpoint, getting the right rotation out there at all times and trying to get into an offensive rhythm to counter that defense that's in your face, hands all the time. They create offense off of defense. Uh, they're ball hawkers, really good defensive outfit, and a really good defensive rebounding team. 
and their guards do a lot of that work as well, jumping plays and all the rest. So keep in mind uh, while you watch this game tonight, you know, those type of things going on. Mark Schmidt, by the way, in his era of basketball, February is his time. 49 and 21 in the month of February is Mark Schmidt since 2016, the month of February 16, that is. Uh, so I guess that bodes well for St. Bonaventure because they do play well uh, during this month. Um, you know, they're also home. They're also coming off a big win against UMass. The confidence has to be a little bit higher. And uh, I, I look at this game as being, this is only the second time in the A-10 that these teams are, are meeting. Loyola Chicago is a new kid on the block. This to me, if I'm all these Bonnie players and I'm the coaches and I'm the fans and I'm the student body, this is a moment for everybody I just mentioned to say, welcome to our place. Welcome to the Riley Center. Welcome to the place that for years was labeled as a top five most difficult place to play in the country. Welcome to our place. Welcome to how hard it is to win here. Welcome to the travel difficulty, although no winner. But welcome to Ole in New York and the challenges and the road game and the uncomfortability. Make it uncomfortable. That's what this game to me is about more than anything. Welcoming in Loyola. Hey, how do you like it here? Make a friggin' statement tonight. You know, I mean, seriously. Like, this season has been so unbelievably disappointing that you have an opportunity to not only catch lightning in a bottle, but while doing so in the last few games of the season, absolutely slap the shit out of Loyola Chicago at home tonight. <clears throat> Make a statement. This is our house. It's the RC. Make it uncomfortable. You know, this is the time to shine if you're a student. You can make a difference tonight. If you're a local at the Beef and Barrel, if you're at the Burton and you're having four or five yinglings before the game, maybe you turn it into five or six. I don't know. I'm just saying. Make a difference at the game tonight. Get out there. And if you don't have a couple of yinglings, it doesn't matter. You can still yell as loud as humanly possible. I don't care what you do, what you eat, what you drink. I couldn't care less. Be loud. Be proud. Go nuts. Because this is the time where you're welcoming in a new kid on the block, and you could say, this is our place, and this place, it sucks playing here. Make it that way. Make it uncomfortable. Charles Pride, by the way, cannot believe this stat. Entered the week, <clears throat> entering 26th among all active Division I players in career re rebounds with 897. Only two active guards in the country have more rebounds than Pride. So 26 is unbelievable for any position player, active, but the fact that he is a guard, then you shrink that number down, and there's only two guards in the country with more career rebounds. That's it. That's the list. Who are they? Baylor Shireman from Creighton and Christian Ray from Delaware. That's it. That's the list. So as far as active guards with career rebounds in the country currently, Charles Pride is third. That is pretty impressive, in my opinion. So, who wins this game? Going to be very interesting. Um, I could see this game going one of three ways. Loyola just completely neutralizes Bonaventure and wins an ugly game in the upper 50s, low 60s. Bonaventure is able to move the chess pieces and score enough points and use the home crowd to win close, whether that's in the upper 50s, low 60s, 70s, I don't care where it is, but win close. Or this game gets ugly and Loyola Chicago wins by like, you know, between 8 and 12 points, maybe even more, just because of how good they are and how much of a run they are. I mean, let's not kid ourselves here. The more consistent team this year has been Loyola Chicago. This is a team that's 20-7 and seven right now. You know, this is a team that <clears throat> has won seven ball games in a row, right? Now, granted, you know, you beat average to maybe a couple of above-average teams. Um, I think we're going to know a lot more about this club on Friday in the 9 o'clock window of, um, you know, Dayton uh, playing, you know, at home against the Flyers. Uh, that'll be a really good basketball game. Um, but you know, they haven't played Dayton yet this year. Uh, as far as other teams they've played, 
Uh, they went out of conference and beat a math Boston College team. They got thrashed by Creighton. They lost by double digits to Florida Atlantic. So their out of conference schedule has not shown us anything. In the Atlantic 10, they've been dominant. They've been 12 and 2. They go at Bonaventure, Dayton at home, at Davidson, LaSalle at home. I mean, what an unbelievable stretch to end it here. I don't think they'll have problems with LaSalle, but the other three games, very interested to see how this team ends because the meat of the schedule is now for Loyola Chicago. I'm picking with my heart. I haven't been emotionally invested in a long time. I'm not emotionally invested here. I'm just picking the game the way I kind of see it. Loyola Chicago is due to lose. They've got to travel in to Olean. They've got to experience the nonsense, the student body, the RC. I'm also hoping and assuming that all of you students are going to be nuts and that the locals will be nuts. Please don't disappoint me. Please don't, you know, make me sound like an idiot. But go be loud and go nuts. Be crazy. Make it uncomfortable for Loyola Chicago. With that, I think the Bonnies get enough points, big buckets down the stretch by the likes of Adams Woods, big buckets down the stretch by the likes of maybe a Barry Evans, maybe one or two here from Venning. I don't know, but I think that the guards really got to come and, and, and shine tonight. I think Pride... Adams Woods, uh, you know, Moses Flowers. I think he gets a couple of big, big buckets down the stretch as well. He's been playing great lately. The, the rebounding is going to be huge in this game. Taking care of the basketball is going to be huge in this game. Consistent offense is going to be big. A, a, a nice start is going to be big in this game. The home crowd is going to be big in this game. Fundamentals and basketball IQ will be big in this game. And with that, I am going to take St. Bonaventure 68-66. to 66 in this game at the Riley Center. Mike Lindsley here. It's an ML Sports Take brought to you by Welch & Company Jewelers, Stumbling Monkey Brewing Company, and Camillo's Golf Club. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. And as I always tell you, enjoy the games.